Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless you, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his, his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
So about 17 years ago, uh, when Madeline was quite literally a baby, and Bryson and Anna were not even glints in Betha's and my eye, uh, I first stuck my toe into the process of discerning a call to ministry in the church. This was in Rochester, New York, uh, at, a, at a beautiful, uh, small, uh, not small actually, it was a rather sizable, small facility, large church in Pittsburgh, New York, called Christ Church Pittsburgh. And uh, the, the rector there was this, this formidable presence, this, this woman called Winifred Collin. And I remember vividly that first meeting when I met with Winifred to talk to her about this sense of call that I felt to ministry. And uh, Winifred sort of squared her shoulders right towards me and looked me square in the face. And she said, you say your prayers? <laughs> I, I immediately responded, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, I do, I do. Uh, now, in my, in my mind's eye, when I replay this scene, of course, it, it takes on a sort of a spaghetti western quality, you know, with Clint Eastwood standing across a windswept plain looking at me, you know, flinty-eyed, you know, say your prayers kind of thing. Uh, now, Winifred was not challenging me to a shootout at that moment. Uh, I, I, have come to, I have come to understand what she was doing, I think, was asking about my prayer life. What she was doing, I think, in this first question to me, this first question to this guy who walks into her office and says, you know, gosh, I, I feel maybe I'm, I'm called to, to, to some ministry in the church. Her first question was, do you say your prayers? Do you say your prayers? Now that stays with me now almost two decades later, because if I'm honest, the question took me aback. The question made me uncomfortable. It embarrassed me, even. Now, I don't know where I got this, maybe this resonates with you, but somewhere in my background, I, you know, I must have equated, you know, talking about prayer with talking about politics or talking about religion. It's just something you don't do. But here was this person inviting me to talk about prayer. Our gospel today is about prayer. Our gospel today is part two of a two-part drama. The drama began last week with the parable of the tenacious widow and the unjust judge. Remember how that lesson began last week. It began with the evangelist telling the readers that Jesus was telling a parable to teach his disciples to pray always and to not lose heart. Now that tenacious widow last week taught us a lot about not losing heart. But this week, we learn something about prayer. We learn something about what prayer is, how we are called to pray. In fact, why we pray. The parable, of course, presents a tale of two prayers, if you will. The self-righteous Pharisee. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Thank God I am not like that person over there. I say my prayers, I pay my tithes. Thank God I am not like that person over there. And the other prayer, the repentant tax collector. God have mercy on me, a sinner. So what is prayer? Well, our Book of Common Prayer is very helpful here. 
We have a catechism. Did you know that? The Episcopal Church has a catechism. <laughs> An outline of the faith. And in that outline of the faith, prayer is described as our reaction to God's action. Prayer, in other words, is something we do because of God's grace, God's action, God's movement in our lives. I think this is an important thing. It might seem like a semantic small distinction, but friends, consider prayer does not begin with us. Prayer begins with God. It begins with God's grace. It begins with God's invitation. It begins with God's arms outstretched. Prayer is then our reaction to that. Prayer is what we do in the face of God's grace, in the face of God's action, in the face of God's agency. Prayer is thank you. Prayer is please. Prayer is forgive. How do we pray? Well, of course, our gospel today gives us two case studies. I would say what to do and what not to do. But what is it exactly that the penitent tax collector does that is commendable or right or even imitatable? What the penitent tax collector teaches us, I think, is that to come in prayer to God is to be naked. It is to be completely and foundationally and without any ground beneath us vulnerable and open. It is not extolling our virtues. It is not talking about the ten great things we did before breakfast. I mean, I sometimes even wonder why we even bother with that. Like God doesn't know. <laughs> like God doesn't see who we are. Warts and all. Are we to take the psalmist seriously? That before we were even formed in the womb, God knew us? Who are we kidding, friends? We don't need to dress up. We don't need to be fancy. We don't need to talk about all the great things we did. God knows all that. To come in prayer before God is to come before the presence that birthed us into creation, to come before the creator of all that is seen and unseen, who loved us before the foundations of the earth. It is to be then vulnerable and honest. Honest. That's how to pray. Why do we pray? Well, I would say for as many people as are in this room, there are that many reasons, and more. I would say there are as many reasons to pray as there are stars in the sky. Anybody who ever was, or is, or will be, there are that many reasons to pray, and more. Because prayer, finally, is the oxygen we breathe. Prayer, finally, is the ground of our discipleship. Prayer, finally, is the sustenance of our faith. Prayer is what we live. But if you don't believe me, 
I'm reminded of a little scene in the marvelous play made into a film, Shadowlands, about C.S. Lewis. In this play, there is a scene where he is receiving some honor or other at Oxford. And one of the great Oxford dons, probably who tolerated C.S. Lewis's faith, didn't take it too seriously, but simply tolerated it, walking past him says, Ah, well, Jack, it looks like God is finally answering your prayers. And in the play and in the film, C.S. Lewis is left sort of stammering, saying, No, 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 that's not, that's not why I pray to God. And then the Oxford Don politely nods and continues along his way, and C.S. Lewis is left alone. And he says, I don't pray to God for that. I don't pray to God to change God's mind. I pray to God to change mine. May it always be so for us. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith, saying together the Nicene Creed on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God and the Father, God and God, the light and the light, true God and true God, God and not made, of one being with the Father, through him. Bless all whose lives are 
closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. We pray for our companion parish, St. John's of Belfont, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Good Shepherd in Hawk Run. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the province of the Anglican Church of the Congo. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for those, for those who have been commended to our parish prayers, and anyone else we may name at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Dick Gibney, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
uh, for some time of uh, fellowship down there. Uh, last week we had the crop walk, uh, and uh, it was a beautiful day, and we had, we had a lot of uh, walkers from the, from the parish. If you forgot or you never got around to donating, fear not, you can still donate. Um, they'll, they'll take donations for a couple of weeks at least. Also last week I mentioned that we will be having our guests from out of the cold here starting a week from tomorrow, starting on uh, Halloween. And then for two weeks we'll be hosting them. There are uh, sign-ups now available uh, to help out and volunteer and be part of that. Um, I also mentioned last week that we are doing a St. Andrew's Day celebration this year. It falls on a Wednesday, the Wednesday after uh, Thanksgiving, November 30th, in case you didn't have that in the front of your mind. That's St. Andrew's Day. And uh, we will have worship service, we'll have a dinner uh, that night, and so just kind of put that on your calendar and plan on coming to join us uh, for our uh, Patronal Feast Day, St. Andrew's Day. Uh, also, coming up in uh, just two weeks, we will be celebrating All Saints Day. All Saints Day is on the 1st of November, of course. Uh, we will be celebrating on the Sunday following the 6th of December. Uh, did I December? Why did I say December? Uh, because we were looking for the gifts we were going to give uh, your family. For Christmas, exactly. Uh, <clears throat> no, November, sorry, 1st of November, we will celebrate it in church on Sunday, November. Um, that's two weeks from today. So if you have the name of someone you'd like us to remember on All Saints Sunday, someone who's died in the past year, um, you can um, email that to the office or even call the office and, and uh, give the name. If you want to just jot it down on a scrap of paper and hand it to me, that would be fine. Just don't tell me and expect me to remember because I won't. Um, any, any other announcements this morning? The walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Let us continue with our worship with the great thanksgiving, Eucharistic Prayer of Deeds, page 372 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Grant that all who share the bread and cup 
We become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with St. Andrew, our patron, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us.